Alright, we got the unit disassembled. That's going to be the chip that I'm pulling right there. This is the front of it, what it looks like once it's all taken apart. I mean, you got to yeah, completely take all that out to get everything. It, it's, it's deep in there. Alright, so my tools I have ready here. I got a chip extractor. I got my soldering iron, hot, uh, hot air. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean the tip and everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tin this chip a little bit on the outside to, to flow some new solder on it. I'm going to use a piece of solder braid and try to suck as much solder as I can off there. And then I'll, I'll gently pull on it and, and blow a little hot air on there and uh, she'll come right off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass the camera off and uh, get started working on this.
Alright, I pretty much got all of the sort of that I'm going to get and uh, <clears throat> with the iron. Now I'm just going to heat her up a little bit with some hot air. And uh, gently tug on the chip. Alright, she's out. Now, I'll go ahead and go ahead and put that in the EEPROM programmer. I'll copy it. I'm going to solder this socket in there. I'm going to clean that up and get that ready to go. After, uh, after I got this chip copied, we'll... Uh, put it back in verify everything works and uh, we'll look at editing the hex files alright so we got it back together we've read the EEPROM this was the data that was in the EEPROM so this box that I got highlighted right here is our first box and that is actually the receive frequency and this is the transmit frequency alright so, what I've done is the, the top one is the receive, I converted that hex over into a decimal, multiply the decimal times <clears throat> 5 for the channel space and plus 21400 for the IF frequency and that gives me 154.650, same situation on the bottom inside gives me 155.595 so <clears throat> got the repeater plugged into a dummy load <clears throat> and then let's set the uh, let's set the scope to 155.595 all right 155.595 five I'll switch that over to narrow band. Now, wide band is in broadcast, narrow band is in what used to be narrow band. Uh, this is uh, 25 kc spacing. So we'll squelch that up a little bit, and give us a little volume on there. And I add the Bofong program to the receive frequency of this unit. Radio service. One fifty five. We got the frequencies wrong there. One fifty five five nine five. All right. And we're just gonna go ahead and test it. I've already calibrated the meter and and uh, got everything set up. It's on a two hundred watt scale. Radio service testing. Radio service testing. One two three. Radio service testing. And. You can see the deviation on. Well, not too much on the deviation because we're. I'm actually receiving on that antenna that's up there on top of the light right now. We don't have it connected directly into the scope. So, it works. It's functional. And what I'm going to go ahead and do now, and I'm, I'm, I may shoot a video of this, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and inject a tone with the scope. And 
we're going to check the alignment on the radio so once I move it down and change the frequencies over into the ham band uh, I can check that alignment again and be sure everything's good now to do that we're just going to work these problems backwards we'll take the we'll take the frequency that we want we'll subtract the IF we'll divide it by five and then convert that back into hex and that'll give us the hex values that we need to be able to put into the chip alright I've went ahead and pulled the control tray out so we can get to the VCO pins alright and I got my I got my probe right now on the receive VCO um, you're gonna wanna check is it test point one for receive and test point one right there is for receive and test point two is right back over there you can see the stud sticking up next to the capacitor for transmit um, <clears throat> now this one was a little low initially before we even made the mod I had three point let's see three point three two one volts on the the receive side of it so I went ahead and aligned it where it was at just to, to be sure everything was functional now I'm going to reprogram the chip to the hand bands no, I'll go ahead and move this over here to the other VCO. This is the transmit VCO right here. You can see they got transmit on top of the little can. <coughs> uh, <coughs> I think 4.08. So uh, the, the manual says these need to be between 4 and 4.5 volts plus or minus 0.5. So um, whenever you go to adjust these, you're just going to take a little little tool like this is a and you're just going to turn that little capacitor in there alright I got the repeater torn back apart pulled the EEPROM out put the EEPROM in the little mini program or the mini pro and my two addresses are up there. I was trying to do this at the before I, I swap the, the swap videos off to tear it apart, but the I ran out of room on my iPhone and I had to back it up and then wait for the Apple to clear the videos. Um, so I've got the frequency pair in there ready to go, and we have worked the problem backwards. 146.205 minus the IF divided by the channel spacing. I got my decimal and then converted my decimal over the hex. Same thing for the for the transmit of the repeater. Um, so the top one is the input of the repeater. The bottom one is the output of the repeater. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and I know this is not showing up very clear on the, the phone, but We'll go ahead and edit these values directly in here. And 6181. 6181. And 61F9. 61F9. Alright. And then we're just going to click up here on device. And we're going to go to program. Hit program. Alright, programming successful. Alright, we'll close up out of that. We'll read the device just for giggles. Alright, so she took the programming. So pull my chip out of there. And, uh, you want a video this morning? I'm going to go ahead and put this chip back in, and I have to rewrite, um, the data on the chip that's actually inside of the control, it's the, it's the same little chip that uh, does the frequencies, it's a 93C46, it actually contains the PL tones, alright, so, the, uh, 
this repeater did have a PL tone and it was not transmitting anything it was not transmitting anything whenever I would key into it so I had to pull the other little chip out and I think that just fell in the parts bin alright we gotta go fishing alright we fished the EEPROM out I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy in there that works so much better with two hands alright so same EEPROM we're just gonna read this one and close that out so I'm gonna save this I don't know what these PL tones were um, we'll go up one directory and we'll name this one PL chip directory and I'll name it O E M. I'm just gonna do a quick name and I'll come back and rename that. Alright and then we're just gonna F F out all of these so that just means no data. Alright and we're a device and we're going to program program and then we're gonna read it and be sure we don't get any random stuff back in there. Alright, so it's good to go. Alright, so there's my chip. We're going to align. I don't know if you can see there, but the little notches on that side. So we're going to align the notch up. And it's just in there as a blank. If ever, if never it need be, the frequency chip or something goes out, or uh, they have an issue with it, someone could pull that one at that point in time. And really, it, it works without it, but you know, we're going to put it back in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this all back up. And we're going to come back on the and align it and check all that good stuff out. Alright, so we have got it all set back up, everything's in, um, the VCO is way off, so I'm going to go ahead and I mean, we've got 0.3 volts on the, uh, 0.3 volts on the transmit VCO, actually it's a receiving, I'm not sure what the receive VCO is at right now, but we're about to find out if I can get the test probe on there alright so we're at 0.9 volts I'm just going to reach in there and tweak this VCO adjustment Get that up around 4.5 volts on the VCO uh, looks like we're not going to be able to get to 4.5 Alright, so we got four volts on the VCO for the receive K5 MOB testing. Alright, we got the squeal out of the audio. And we're gonna go to the transmit VCO. K5 MOB testing. A5 MOB testing. All right, with three point six volts in the transmit VCO. And we need to 
Go to 150, excuse me, 146.850 is the output of this machine now. 146805. 146805. K5 MOB testing. Test 123. Testing 123. Alright. 123. K5 MOB testing. 123. 123. Alright. So that's it. She's on frequency. And, uh, She'll be ready to go. We're going to go ahead and get uh, the All Star node and some a little checks and balances done, but for the most part, it's ready to, ready to go into service. Alright, we got everything. Uh, you can see the voltage over there. We're about 3.65. It, it'll, it'll creep up to 3. 3.7 occasionally. Uh, which is fine because it's it's four volts plus or minus 0.5 so we're, we're, we're within spec of the unit um, that is the transmit uh, VCO you're looking at there um, I have the unit set up hooked up to the communication analyzer and uh, I'm just gonna turn I got a one kilohertz tone on about four 4K deviation. And you're gonna see. So right. It is actually breaking the squelch at 1.45 microvolts. But you see, it hasn't keyed the transmitter yet. The reason why it hasn't keyed the transmitter is the the sign ad. The signal's not good enough. You can hear the some white noise in that signal. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it up a little bit more until we deflect on the power output. You hear the signal getting a little clearer. And we just started transmitting. So it, it is transmitting at about 2, in between 2.5 and 2.65 uh, microvolts on the input. Alright, so we have everything ready to go just about to put the covers back on uh, run about 3.8 K of deviation and what I have here is the watt meter pulled up I can't the amp that we have is supposed to be 8 to 10 watts in um, Unfortunately, the lowest I can get this thing to do is, is 11.1 .1 watts out. So, see right there. Now, amazingly enough, this thing was hooked to the amplifier. The amplifier is right over there. Previously, and was uh, putting quite a bit out. Um, we were. Here's the watt meter I was using initially for initial testing. And on the 200 watt scale, we were putting out, I think it was 45 watts. I have to go back and look at the other video. I don't remember exactly what it was. But anyway, it was putting out way too much for what it had. So I got it turned down to 11 watts, and we're going to check it with the PA and see. Alright, we're going to go ahead and make some adjustments. So we got 25 watts coming out of the repeater. Evidently the manual that was located for the amplifier was wrong because it... At 11 watts into the, re, into the amplifier, we only got 70 or so out. Um, so I have went and grabbed the battery. You got the amplifier hooked up to the battery. Now we got this power meter on the 200 watt scale. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. All right, 
right. So 200 watts is all the way to the right. So we're 190 watts. So one TK R720, one big old super duper amplifier, and 190 watts. I think that is more power than any repeater that I have ever talked on. K5 MOB signing off.